Welcome to the Spondyloarthritis Self-Management Education class and this online module. My name is Carolyn Johns and I'm a physiotherapist uh, who works with community accessible rehabilitation. The objectives for this module will be to increase your understanding of spondyloarthritis. We'll review the signs, symptoms and disease progression. Uh, increase your awareness of associated concerns and spend most of our time on the management of spondyloarthritis, which will include a brief overview of the medications used to treat these conditions, encourage you to uh, stop smoking if you are a smoker, help you with flare management, posture and breathing exercises, and exercise in general. So what is spondyloarthritis? It refers to a group of diseases that are characterized by chronic inflammation of the spine and the sacroiliac joints. There are various subtypes that fall under this umbrella term, including ankylosing spondylitis, which is the most common uh, form of spondyloarthritis, and we will focus the majority of our time on ankylosing spondylitis, but there are other subtypes, including psoriatic arthritis and inflammation of the spine that's associated with inflammatory bowel disease. Although we will focus mainly on AS, the principles that we will discuss can apply to the other subtypes as well. What is ankylosing spondylitis? Ankylosing spondylitis is an inflammatory arthritis where the main symptom is back pain. And inflammation occurs at the sites where ligaments or tendons attach to bone. And this inflammation is followed by some wearing away of the bone at that site of attachment. And as the inflammation uh, resolves, healing takes place and new bone can develop. Repetition of this process leads to further bone formation and the vertebrae in your back have the potential uh, to fuse together. This fusion, of course, would make your spine less flexible and can result in a hunch forward posture. And if your ribs are effective, it can make it a little more uh, difficult to breathe. So, Ankylosing spondylitis affects men more than women in a three to one ratio. Symptoms usually begin in early adulthood, adulthood, excuse me, and it's a gradual onset versus a very acute onset. Sacroiliac joint involvement is characteristic, but peripheral joints may be involved. It's usually the larger joints of your lower body, including knees and ankles. And due to the systemic nature of this condition, it can affect other systems in your body, including your eyes, bowel, bone, and more rarely heart and lungs. At the present time, we do not have a cure for uh, ankylosing spondylitis, but the treatments that are available can lessen your symptoms and, and slow the progression of the disease. So this is just a few pictures to show you what it can look like in your spine. The picture on the far left shows a healthy spine with uh, two vertebrae and the intervertebral discs in between them. In ankylosing spondylitis, we get inflammation at the site where the outer ring of the disc attaches to the vertebrae. And through the sort of inflammation and healing process, new bone can be laid down in that area, fusing the two levels together. And if more of this happens throughout the spine, it can lead to that uh, hunched forward position where you get increased curvature of your mid back with your head held in a forward uh, head position. The picture on the far left shows the areas of your spine that can be involved with the sacroiliac joints at the bottom of the spine where the pelvis attaches to the spine. You can have uh, inflammation of the facet joints, which are all the little joints that uh, articulate between your vertebrae as well, and where your ribs attach to the spine as well. 
Imaging and the use of MRIs and x-rays also helps us to um, assess and diagnose people with uh, ankylosing spondylitis. The picture on your far left is an MRI picture, and it can pick up very early inflammation in someone's spine. And where that red arrow is, it's showing a bit of inflammation at the corner of the vertebrae where that disc is attaching. And this corresponds with a bit of loss of bone that is occurring that we can see in the middle picture on plain film. And then over time, um, that new bone formation that is joining the vertebrae uh, called a syndesmophyte. Again, I think it's important to highlight that not everybody with ankylosing spondylitis will go on to have fusion of their spine or SI joints, but the potential is there. And that's why it's so important from an exercise point that we um, help you to keep the best possible posture uh, and movement in your spine as you go through life. So just to recap, Ankylosing spondylitis is an autoimmune inflammatory arthritis where your body's own immune system, for unknown reasons, attacks your joints and the fibrocartilage and tendons in your spine, SI joints, rib cage, and possibly in the peripheral joints as well. We consider this to be a systemic uh, arthritis, and that just means that it can affect multiple systems in your body. And we'll discuss that in a little more detail. And it is a chronic long-term and progressive condition. But unfortunately, we have no way of predicting that course for you. For some people, it's a very mild um, condition. And for others, it progresses a little more um, rapidly. So what might you have as symptoms of this. Patients uh, often come to us and, and present to physiotherapists with this gradual onset of back pain and stiffness that has occurred over weeks uh, and months rather than hours or days. And it does persist. It may be a bit episodic and come on in short attacks, but it is persisting for more than three months. People often complain of significant early morning stiffness, so hours of stiffness uh, versus minutes. And this, they notice, gets less significant as the day progresses and they start to move around. People with an inflammatory uh, spondyloarthritis will say that movement and gentle exercise makes them feel better rather than worse, and that rest and immobility makes their symptoms worse. When people first present, they often complain of overwhelming fatigue due to that systemic nature of the inflammatory arthritis. And some people may even notice some weight loss and night sweats and feeling feverish in the early stages when the inflammation in their bodies is quite high. So I did want to touch uh, on some of the associated concerns. Uh, due to the systemic nature of this condition, I mentioned earlier that it can uh, affect your heart, bones, eyes, gut, skin, and lungs. Some of these uh, associated concerns are very rare, but we do know with our inflammatory arthritis uh, arthritis that it does carry an increased cardiovascular risk. So it is important that we treat these conditions and lower that inflammation in your body, which can lead to inflammation in your um, arteries and cause uh, a hardening of our, those arteries or atherosclerosis. So we definitely want people to um, follow up with their family doctors and make sure that we are lowering are all your cardiovascular risk factors. So for example, uh, keeping your blood pressure in a, in a good range, keeping your cholesterol in a good range. Um, and certainly if you are a smoker, we would advise you to stop smoking as this can contribute to um, hardening of your arteries and also be hard on your lungs. 
Um, people with ankylosing spondylitis uh, can have lower bone mineral density. And the new bone that gets laid down is often not the strongest of bone two. So it is important that you discuss your bone health with your family doctor and make sure that you're doing all the right things to maintain that bone mineral density and certainly exercise, strength training and weight bearing exercises are a great um, tool for helping to maintain good bone mineral density. People can have inflammation in their eyes and it's usually the iris part or the colored part of your eye that can be inflamed. And the terms iritis or uveitis are, are given um, to those conditions where that part of the eye becomes inflamed. And this warrants prompt medical attention because it can if left untreated, contribute to uh, a loss of vision. People who have inflammation in their eyes uh, present with red, painful um, eyes, uh, and it would be something that you would notice and, and seek medical attention. And I will go over that in a little bit more detail. People can have inflammation of their bowels and have that uh, also be associated with a spondyloarthritis. So Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis are two conditions that we see where people also show some inflammation in their spine. The skin can be involved and that's usually with psoriasis, which is red, scaly, itchy patches on the skin. I have a picture of, of it here uh, that shows some psoriatic uh, plaques over uh, this person's knees. So people who have skin psoriasis may go on to develop a psoriatic arthritis or uh, a spondyloarthritis associated with their skin psoriasis. The lungs uh, are, are rarely involved, but people with ankylosing spondylitis can develop some fibrosis in the top part of their lungs. But because our ribs and the attachments of our ribs can be affected, and we can uh, lose the elasticity of our chest wall, it's really important that um, people who have ankylosing spondylitis, if they are smokers, uh, they stop smoking. And uh, certainly if people were to develop uh, an upper respiratory tract illness with AS who had significant uh, stiffness in their chest wall, they might um, have a little more difficulty getting over some of these uh, illnesses. So it's important that we're doing exercises to help promote chest wall mobility. And certainly that's one of the reasons we recommend aerobic exercise for our patients to in ensure that they are uh, working on their cardiovascular and lung or respiratory health. Sorry, just having a bit of trouble advancing. So this is a slide just uh, highlighting um, eye inflammation. Again, one of the names is uveitis. These signs often come on very suddenly and get worse quickly. Uh, it can affect one or both eyes and you would feel a very painful red and light sensitive eye with some blurred vision and perhaps dark uh, floaters in your field of vision. It can occur in up to 30 or 40% of patients who have ankylosing spondylitis. So it's something to be on the lookout for. It does warrant uh, prompt medical attention. They usually treat it with topical steroids in the eye, but if left untreated, it can lead to a long-term damage uh, to the eye. So it is something that you want to have looked at. So what can happen over time with your condition? And ankylosing spondylitis can affect everyone very differently, but generally people find their symptoms come and go over many years. And over time, their spine can become a stiff due to extra bony growth. Uh, the upper spine and neck can also become involved. The first spot that we usually see it in the spine is at the junction of your mid-back and low back. And of course, um, the sacroiliac joints are usually the first site of involvement. So keeping good posture and exercising daily goes a long way to helping you have a really good outcome. So now we're going to get into the management of spondyloarthritis. And of course, we do that with medications. 
We advise people to stop smoking. We help people with posture awareness and re-education. Uh, educate them regarding uh, chest wall mobility and breathing exercises. Encourage them to maintain a healthy weight. Encourage daily exercise uh, that is more specific uh, to your spinal uh, health and encourage an active lifestyle. So let's go over the medications. The first line of treatment for people with spondyloarthritis is the use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. And some studies have shown with the regular use of these medications that it might in fact help to slow down uh, disease progression. The next group of medications refers to steroids. And we only use steroids for local joint injections in the peripheral joints or bursal or tendon sheath injections that are done under ultrasound guidance at radiology departments. Um, taking steroids uh, orally by mouth or receiving an injection into your muscle doesn't tend to help people with their spinal symptoms but would help a patient who had a lot of peripheral joints that were swollen. Disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs um, are very useful with our inflammatory arthritis, such as rheumatoid arthritis and psoriatic arthritis, where a lot of your peripheral joints are involved, like your wrists, your hands, your elbows, your knees, your ankles. But we have found these medications don't help with the inflammation that is occurring in people's spines. So luckily, uh, since really um, the early uh, 2000s, there's a new class of medications that have come to the market called biologics, and these have really revolutionized uh, the medical management of people with ankylosing spondylitis, as these medications do treat the spinal inflammation and help to slow down uh, the rate of progression. Smoking is something that uh, we encourage all our patients uh, to consider uh, stopping as we have seen smokers who have ankylosing spondylitis tend to have more spinal damage uh, than non-smokers who have the same sort of level of disease activity. It is associated with worse inflammation and radiographic damage in early disease and increased severity in long-standing disease. People tend to have poor outcomes relating to function. And you are, of course, at increased risk of developing earlier and faster progression of atherosclerosis or hardening of your arteries, uh, which uh, by the nature of our conditions and having inflammation in your body is already occurring. So we don't want to uh, contribute to that. So certainly we advise our, our patients to speak with their family doctor or go to the um, provincial website www.albertaquits.ca for additional information and support. Posture awareness and re-education is very important for people who have ankylosing spondylitis as we want you to stiffen in a good position if you are going to stiffen with this condition as you age. We know that standing straight helps to distribute your body weight evenly, reduces your risk of injury by lowering stress on muscles, ligaments, and joints, helps you to breathe fully, promotes good circulation, and helps to prevent that hunched over uh, posture. The wall test can be used to self-monitor your posture, and it's one that we use in our clinic to uh, measure your occiput to wall distance. And it's as simple as trying to stand with your back against the wall, getting your heels in as close to the wall as you can, your um, buttocks and shoulder blades touching the wall and seeing if you can touch the back of your head to the wall while keeping the carrying angle of your chin level. Many people that we see in clinic are like the woman on the right, where she's developed that increased curvature of her mid-back, and she's no longer able to bring her head uh, and touch it against the wall. Breathing exercises are important because they help to keep your chest wall and ribs moving well. The chest wall will commonly stiffen with AS and deep breathing exercise will help to make breathing uh, easier and less painful. We also know that uh, 
breath awareness and breathing exercises can help to reduce stress. And uh, it is important that we try to uh, incorporate uh, breath into our, our daily activities and when we exercise as well. So exercise is probably the single most important thing that you can do to help yourself have the best possible outcome with this conditions. Um, the fitter and the more flexible you are, the better able you are to deal with the stiffness and pain. Uh, we do recommend, however, to avoid high impact activities or, or contact sports, especially in people who have areas of fusion in their spine. So there are some precautions that we want to highlight. It is important to know if any parts of your spine are fused, because if they are, that area of fusion will be rigid and have no give. And um, we want you then to avoid high impact activities or um, contact sports that might uh, place too much stresses on those areas of your spine that are fused. Um, as far as what we would recommend you to do, it also depends on your, your past experience with an activity and if you've done this sort of activity and have muscle memory uh, for an activity, uh, it may be that it's appropriate for you to continue with this activity with modifications um, in mind. And, and that leads us to modification of activities. You know, many of the patients I see love cycling and road cycling, which unfortunately promotes that forward bent position. However, it's a, a great form of exercise. It's low impact. And therefore, it would be something I'd want to encourage you to continue with, with perhaps some modifications in place, like raising the handlebars, taking frequent breaks, and completing some back extension exercises after your cycling workout. Swimming is one of our, our go-to recommendations for aerobic activity. It tends to be um, very kind to the body and joints. And it is very good for improving chest wall mobility. However, some of our patients will have uh, reduced mobility in their necks, which makes it difficult for them to breathe. So one of our uh, recommendations uh, can be to use a mask and snorkel to allow someone to keep their head in the water in a neutral position while they're completing either the breaststroke or freestyle stroke. So <clears throat> the writing in the red at the bottom is uh, just a, a caution. If you have fusion in your spine, that spine will be more vulnerable to an injury. So if you do have an accident or a fall, it's important to take any new symptoms in your back seriously and seek appropriate uh, medical attention. So if you did, um, for example, if you were out downhill skiing and you had a fall and suddenly you had very sharp, acute back pain that felt very different from your normal, it would be uh, important to go uh, uh, and have um, your back uh, x-rayed uh, by medical professionals to ensure that you haven't sustained a fracture. So exercise and ankylosing spondylitis. This is sort of just a, a daily or a, a guide for you on frequency of exercise. It's probably important that you check in with your posture on a daily basis and make strides to improve your posture in all positions, sitting, standing, when you're working in the kitchen, when you're exercising and when you're sleeping. It's important that you probably do some deep breathing exercises on a daily basis, either through your aerobic activity or actually practicing them um, in a sitting position or, or doing them with a yoga practice, for example. It's important to move your spine in all the ways that it moves on a daily basis. And then the flexibility and, and strengthening can be done a little more um, less frequently, but certainly the more frequent that people do the flexibility exercises, probably the better um, their overall uh, movement and, and function uh, is, and, and probably the better they are able to manage their stiffness and pain.
Strengthening exercises, including core strengthening, upper and lower body, we encourage uh, three times a week. And aerobic exercise, we are trying to follow the Canadian Physical Activity Guidelines with the achievement of 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise per week. However, that can be broken down into much smaller chunks and uh, it is cumulative over the week. Uh, so you can break that up into a variety of different um, scenarios. So what are the benefits of moving your spine and stretching? Well, we know that it helps to prevent shortening of uh, muscles uh, and deformity. It can help to reduce muscle tension and joint stiffness and help improve our balance and coordination. We definitely want to focus on taking our spine into extension, which means going backwards. We want to be uh, focused on taking lots of deep breaths when we do this, uh, these types of exercises. And the posture check-ins, for example, standing against the wall, that's a good reminder and, and something probably that should be done every day. If we look at this little schematic, these are the muscles that tend to get the tightest on people. They get tight in their pectoral muscles on the front of their chest due to the rounding out of their back and the forward uh, flex position that we are all in most of the day. Uh, we also get tight abdominals and tight hip flexors because of our uh, sitting position. Due to the forward head position, the extensors in the back of the neck can become tight. And we also see people who have very tight hamstring muscles on the back of their thighs and calf muscles. Strengthening and the importance of strengthening are as follows. If we have stronger core, uh, abdominals, uh, back extensors and buttock muscles will have better posture. It helps to protect our joints and reduce the risk of energy. Uh, injury, can help increase our energy levels, help to strengthen our bone mineral density, and help to improve our function and mobility. And focusing on some breathing exercises also helps to strengthen our diaphragm. So the muscles that we tend to focus on in patients who have ankylosing spondylitis are weak abdominals, buttocks, uh, back extensors, and neck extensors. Aerobic exercise is highly recommended because of all the following benefits. It helps to reduce our inflammation and pain, can help to manage fatigue, improve our sleep, promote chest expansion, be one of the tools in our toolbox to manage stress and depression, and also help to improve our cardiovascular health and bone mineral density. So examples of low impact aerobic exercise that we would recommend would be activities such as walking, swimming, cycling, cross-country skiing. People have talked about walking on treadmills, ellipticals, using rowing machines. And uh, again, we sort of follow those uh, guidelines of uh, working towards 150 minutes per week of moderate to vigorous intensity exercise. We tend to uh, recommend people use the talk test when they're engaging in aerobic activity. Uh, we want you to be able to chat with your uh, partner if you were walking with someone or cycling with someone or cross-country skiing, but we would definitely not uh, want you to be able to sing while you were performing this activity. Again, just a plug for a water exercise, whether that be swimming, if you are uh, competent and can uh, swim, or whether you want to do an aquasize class. Water is a really wonderful medium. It helps to support your body and act a bit as a shock absorber. Uh, warmer water can help you to relax and, and uh, help manage pain. Um, certainly, if you're able to uh, perform the front crawl or freestyle, it's a wonderful position because it places your back in a bit of extension. Uh, it uh, promotes rotation of your spine and your neck uh, for breath. Um, so a really wonderful, wonderful stroke. There is evidence for yoga, tai chi and pilates as being um, exercise that is helpful for people who have these conditions. I think the benefits of these types of exercises is that they're a combination of mind and body. 
they combine stretching, strengthening endurance, uh, and breath. Uh, they help with stress relief and improving your balance. I think the only thing to mention here as a precaution is there are um, lots of different types of yoga out there and not all types would be appropriate uh, for someone who's got a very uh, stiff or fused back. Uh, and so I encourage people who uh, are going to attend a class or start with a class uh, on YouTube or online is to start off with a very gentle class, a beginner class, uh, where you're going to get a lot of instruction and cueing in how to perform the exercise or the pose uh, to encourage you to do it properly and with modifications also um, at the ready if you need to make modifications. Just a little uh, talk about footwear. Um, it is important that your feet are happy because when we're doing our weight bearing activities, we want to support our foot that has uh, many joints. Um, so you want to look for supportive footwear that is comfortable. If you are having difficulty getting your feet into a shoe that feels comfortable, you may need to consult an orthotist and they will look at your feet and uh, assess your foot and make recommendations regarding uh, footwear that might be uh, most suited to your foot and possibly a uh, footbeds either custom made or off the shelf that might further support uh, the arches of your feet. So uh, we do encourage that people wear footwear in the home sometimes to support their feet during their activities of daily living and definitely you'll want to have a good pair of footwear for when you're exercising uh, at the gym or, or walking outside. So I think it's important to mention that with this condition it can come and go. It can be a bit episodic in nature with people experiencing times when it seems worse and times when it seems more settled. So when people are having uh, a time when their disease seems worse, we call this a flare. And it may indicate that you are having a little bit of increased in inflammation in your body and disease activity. And when you are having a flare, it can affect your ability to function and also places you at risk for maybe developing a little bit more stiffness or deformity of your spine. And some of the common symptoms that people tell us when they are experiencing a flare is that they're noticing um, prolonged early morning stiffness again. They may be noticing more fatigue they may notice that they're having difficulty um, with their posture and, and staying upright. They may notice a reduction of movement in their, their spine, their hips and their shoulders, more spinal and buttock pain, perhaps even a change in their walking pattern, tenderness on palpation of their SI joints or along their spinous processes. Difficulty sleeping, maybe difficulty getting to sleep or difficulty staying asleep with waking during the, the second half of the night. Perhaps some shortness of breath or even a chest wall pain uh, where their ribs are attaching to their sternum or in the back at their thoracic spine. And inflammation of tendinous and ligamentous insertions with the most common sites being the Achilles tendon and the insertion of the plantar fascia on the sole of the foot. Sorry, I'm just getting this advancing, I apologize. So what are some of the practical tips for flare management? You can use ice or heat applied uh, to the area um, to give you some relief of local uh, inflammation. Um, gentle stretching in a warm shower or a warm pool or a hot tub can often feel good. Um, you know, you have to be careful for heat. When, when inflammation is a bit uh, elevated, it's generally not indicated um, because it can make inflammation a bit worse, but uh, it may help patients who just have long-standing AS and are more stiff. Some people will alternate between uh, heat and cold. You may want to see your physiotherapist again for a little bit of um, assistance. 
And you may want to consider complementary therapies such as uh, massage, um, chiropractor, acupuncture, or meditation. The only caution I want to mention is that if you have fusion present in your spine anywhere, that uh, manipulation of your spine uh, would then be uh, contraindicated. Resting positions can become very important when someone is in a flare and making sure you're supporting your body uh, in various positions to allow it to rest. Uh, so in the supine position or when lying on your back, we want to try to support your neck and head without bringing it into a head forward position. Some people will get benefit from putting a small pillow under their low back or one under their knees and thighs. If you're lying on your side, it becomes very important that you have the right pillow to support your head and neck and keep it in this neutral position. Often a pillow between the knees also helps to keep the pelvis in good alignment and reduce the stress on your sacroiliac joints. I've had many patients with AS talk about the use of maternity pillows, which are a U-shaped pillow, um, that if you are a side sleeper, uh, tend to stay in place, of course, a lot better and, and give you the support under your uh, neck and also um, your pelvis with it going between your legs. People also can feel quite comfortable lying on their tummies. Uh, and I know many of you will say, my gosh, I haven't laid on my stomach for a long time. But with the appropriate pillows under your head or even your shoulders and your pelvis, um, this can be a very comfortable position for you to relax in uh, and take the stress off your spine. When you are in flare, you may need to modify your exercise program. You don't want to stop moving completely, but you may have to focus more gentle on gentle movement and reduce some of the strengthening exercises that you are doing. And certainly if you have been able to engage in some higher impact activities such as running, you may want to go back to your lower impact activities until this flare has settled down. And always pay attention to your posture. As far as work is concerned, Many people with ankylosing spondylitis continue to have normal working lives. This tends to be a condition that affects younger people, and it's important that we try to support you and keep you productive and at work. So it is important that you get the right advice and support early on in your disease and to keep the channels of communication open with your employer. Some of the common um, problems that um, patients with ankylosing spondylitis will mention is that early mornings are tough because they're, they're quite painful and stiff, um, that prolonged positions can lead to pain and stiffness, or they might be having difficulty uh, carrying out some of their heavier manual labor tasks too, and they may notice uh, decreased energy or stamina. So um, it is important to sort of chat with your employer and see what potential uh, modifications can be made. Um, some uh, businesses still have occupational therapists or, ergon or ergonomists who can help you with making some suggestions to improve your workplace um, to make it more comfortable for you. So, you know, if you are in a very sedentary job, uh, and sitting lots of time, you are going to want to try to find ways to incorporate more movement into your day to break up that sitting posture and make sure that your sitting posture and your desk is ergonomically set up. If you are working in a, a more manual job, you're going to want to make sure that you're using really good body uh, mechanics when you're doing some of your heavier lifting or overhead um, jobs. Um, and, and maybe allotting tasks to different uh, colleagues if possible or getting help to do some of that heavy lifting with another person. Um, the last few slides here just go over some local resources in Calgary of where you can receive um, support. Uh, community accessible rehabilitation is the umbrella that I'm falling underneath and um, this class is sort of the precursor to the Zoom uh, exercise class that is also offered by uh, Community Accessible Rehabilitation. You can see physiotherapists one-to-one -one at physiotherapy clinics in the community. There are lots of good programs that the City of Calgary offers. Um, and the Alberta Healthy Living Program um, offers supervised exercises for 
for people who have um, chronic illnesses. And they also offer free uh, education sessions uh, covering some of these topics that may be uh, of interest to you. And this is um, something that you can self-register for. Um, I'm also leaving you with a few good internet resources of um, uh, sites that you can get more information, also with uh, online uh, videos of the exercises as well. So I'm going to leave it there and uh, thank you very much for uh, joining me and, and listening to this online module. And uh, once you have uh, completed this, um, we'll look forward to seeing you uh, virtually over Zoom uh, to review uh, the specific exercises that we recommend for patients with ankylosing spondylitis, focusing on spinal range of motion, uh, flexibility, and strength training. Thank you.